Myself to work things out. Where will you be? I don't know. you yesterday, Sarah. I wasn't in any hurry. Cheer up. Huntington House is not so bad. You'll get along all right here. Do I have a choice? Of course. We all have a choice. I think we are going to throw up. Oh? <laughs> Morning sickness, huh? Miss Baldwin. Yes. Welcome aboard. I'm Rodriguez. Miss Mackenzie is waiting for you. You can go right in. Thank you. Baby! What's she up to now? Oh, excuse me. Baby! Wait! Baby! Wanda, you left your books in the laundry room. Wanda, you left your books in the laundry room. Miss Mackenzie? Miss Mackenzie? Yes? Yes. Oh, oh, no, 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 I'm Mrs. Swerton, dear. I'm secretary to Miss, um, uh, Miss Mackenzie. Hello. Agnes, this is our new English teacher. Oh, what happened? What happened to the old English teacher? 
She retired, Agnes, last week. Oh, yes, I remember. We're very lucky to have found such a competent replacement. Thank you. Won't you sit down, Miss Baldwin? Now then, have you ever taught in a maternity home? No, I haven't. Well, it's different. But even though our girls are transients, we like to think of ourselves as a family here at Huntington House. Uh, we have many different types here, but they all have two things in common. Through their ignorance or accident or passion, they are all pregnant. And they are all under 18. Some of them have come to us out of their own free will, and others have been sent here by families, and still others are here because there wasn't any place else to go. But None of them is here to be punished, nor to be hidden. Our responsibility is to continue their education and to see them through this very difficult and emotional time. I understand. Well, no, not yet you don't, but hopefully you will. Because at Huntington House you are more than a teacher. You're an example, you know. And that's why all of our staff is uh, highly qualified for this work. Uh, you, of course, do have your special, don't you? If you mean degree, no, I don't. But you're working on it. I'm working by teaching here. Now, I would appreciate it if someone would take me to the classroom. I would like to write some notes on the board before class begins. But your degree, you mean you don't have it yet? I mean I don't have it at all. Excuse me. Cookie, how many times Miss McKenzie, you? don't go around looking like that. I heard there was a new girl coming today. She's going to be put in my room. I'm getting out of class. Why don't you go upstairs and put some clothes on? If she's going to be put in my room, i got to show her where to put her things. If she gets her shoes in my shoe corner, I'll never get them out. I'll have somebody else's shoes in my corner when I deliver. I'm not kidding, Cookie. Have you seen Baby? No, Caulfield, I haven't. There's only so much Belson and I can do. What's the matter now? Rodriguez has her cornered in the second floor lavatory. Somebody told me she bought a jar of pickles yesterday and ate every last one of them. She's supposed to be on a salt free. She's probably all swollen. Wait till Dr. Lewin hears about this. Someone please Could show me the classroom. Could you please tell me where Cookie, I... Cookie, you please be quiet? Miss McKenzie, it's cookie, important. Cookie, 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 cookie. Show Miss Baldwin to the second floor Miss classroom. Miss Rodriguez will let you know what room the new girl will occupy. And I mean now, Cookie. Yes, ma'am. If I were you, Miss Baldwin, I'd look into the night courses at the university extension program because... All our teachers do have their special degrees. I sure hope you don't give sentences the diagram like the old English teacher did. You better announce study period, Doris, before they all go back to bed. Attention, please, assemble in second floor classroom. I had you figured for a teacher. I guess I don't look much like a student, do I? Ah, but are you an example? So this is your first day here, too. Maybe it'll be my last. If you hadn't been so eager to park this morning, I might not be here now. Boy, I blew it. Really blew it. Baby? Baby, open the door. Baby, you come out of there this instant. No, I won't. You have to take a water shot. Leave me alone. Please, baby. Please come out. You listen to me, young lady. Those pickles have undoubtedly made you toxic. Now you come out of there this instant or I shall get the janitor and have him remove this door from its hinges. Well? Please don't let Belson give me a shot. She sticks. Well, you brought it on yourself. A 15-year-old girl is old enough to watch her salt intake, at least until she delivers. Rodriguez, Miss McKenzie said you'd assign the new girl to her room. I'm sorry about all this confusion, but uh, it does happen. Now, let me see. Where shall I put Sarah? If you put her with me, I'll show her where things go in my closet. Amy Whitten went over this morning. You could put her in her bed. 
That's who I lost track of. Amy Witten. She went to maternity. Uh, you can go in with Gail here. Why can't she be with me? So long as you don't monkey around with my lipstick wheel and keep your shoes off my side of the closet, it's okay with me. No, I already have her written down as being in Gail's room. Could someone please show me my classroom now? Oh, according to my board, this is Miss Fulcher's morning for the egg experiment. And I have to go and see about this. Uh, Gail, would you show Miss Baldwin to her room? And Sarah? And Cookie? Go get dressed, huh? Please? Miss Caulfield. Miss Caulfield. Marlene is waiting for you in the dispensary. You must be the new English teacher. I'm Gail. Yes, I'm Ann Baldwin. What is an egg experiment? It's supposed to teach the fundamentals of pregnancy. Fundamentals? Well, Miss Fulcher breaks open fertile eggs at various stages of fetal development. She thinks we're going to give birth to chickens. My FOB sure wasn't no chicken. <laughs> What's an FOB? Father of baby. Miss Baldwin, your room's over there. Thank you, Gail. Come on, I'll show you around. There aren't any bars on the windows, are there? I said about that old English teacher and their sentences. Yeah, why do we have to write all this stuff anyway? Reading it was hard enough. I only got to page 47. This is really a righteous trip for me. I want you to understand what you read and then be able to write your thoughts down. I understand it all right. In my parish priest isn't gonna like this at all, that's for sure. A man marries his cousin and then he's really in love with his cousin's cousin. That is the plot, Mary Lou. But I'm interested in what Edith Wharton is saying, her philosophy. What she's saying is that we should feel guilty about loving. That's what she's saying. Well, if that's what you get from Ethan Frome, then write it down, all of you. Then we'll discuss it. Words. Words upon words upon words. Like a wall. Sarah, this is an English class. English is a language, and a language is made up of words. Not only words, but words that have a meaning. Without verbal communication, there would be no culture. What makes you think you're communicating with us? We'd still be animals. What makes you think we're not? Because we can think. Some of us can feel. All right, class. I expect you to do the assignment tonight. Bring it in tomorrow. I want a full book report, two pages by tomorrow. you do? Tell me, what's the difference between thinking one feels and feeling? Well, for a start, one doesn't use impersonal language, does one? And when you don't have to ask that question, then you'll know your feeling. If you had a man in your life, you'd know what I was talking about. Oh, Sarah, I know what you're talking about. I was 17 once, too, you know. Does a teacher's condescension ever end? What I mean is you feel in a different way as you get older. Do you have a man in your life or not, Miss Baldwin? I did, until recently. That's what I thought. Oh, Sarah, I've had several men in my life, and I hope to have several more. But have you ever been in love? Again, we get back to semantics. Sarah, I think you better go. You're right. 
We're not communicating at all. about it now when I found out I was pregnant I must had a nervous breakdown a real breakdown yeah my mother took me to a doctor who gave me shock treatments You're kidding yeah, she thought it would cure my depressions did it it made me forget my French I used to speak it fluently but I don't remember a word not anything uh, I don't remember how to play guitar I hate being confined. I remember this movie I saw once, a long, long time ago. This mad scientist had this little bitty room where he put all the people he didn't like, and then he'd flip a switch, and the walls would move together and crush them. Sounds like Edgar Allan Poe. It was the Incredible Doctor something. I bet if I looked in the cellar or someplace, I'd find him right here in Huntington House. I don't really mind it here so much. Twitch. What? His own. Twitch his own. I hate it. When I first found out I was pregnant, boy, I felt like Mother of the Earth. You know? now alone in this place you're not alone you have me and sandy will come back he will i'm certain of it i'm sure my fob never will why not he's in jail my mother said he raped me so they put him in jail did he no I made him love me. It was an escape for both of us. He was my classics teacher. Do you really love him? Yeah. Oh, uh, Miss Baldwin. This is Marilyn Dunn. She's very near the end of her pregnancy, and her family threw her out, literally, till she delivers. She won't be with us long enough to get class credit, so really all you can do is just try to keep her busy. Come on, sweetie. <laughs> it's all right, love. Marilyn, I'm Miss Baldwin. Hello. <laughs> God, I know my parish priest isn't going to like my reading this book. <laughs> hey, hold it straight. Girls, this is Marilyn, new student in our class. Now, we'll take a seat and see what we can do. Are you going to sit with me? No, dear. The second table, the empty chair, over there. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> well, look Hi. what the wind then blew in. <gasps> what? <laughs> A minute. Boyer. <Bon> <laughs> what? What's that? Boyer. Means somebody watches. God, who'd want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. What are you reading, girls? Human sexuality, patterns and perversions. <laughs> I found it in the library. Cookie, I'd better take that book and return it for you. Oh, oh, Thank you. Never have any fun in this classroom. That's really funny. I see nothing humorous about sexual aberrations, Sarah. We're already pregnant. What's with you? 
Besides, half those words are nothing but crummy, misinterpreted labels for love. I don't think anybody in this whole godforsaken place knows what love is. I don't know about you, honey, but I know what love does. I said love, not sex. I hope I get out of here before I'm perverted. Sarah, please. I want no more disturbances. Now, the assignment for the day is a 250-word essay on man's relationship to nature. You may use our Thoreau readings as a start if you wish. You may begin now. <coughs> Miss Baldwin? Yes, Wanda. If I write a 500-word essay, could I get double credit? See, there are seven kids in our family. And I can't go back to school. I want to get it over with so I can take care of my baby. You're keeping your baby? Sure. I see. No, you don't see. One doesn't keep one's baby if one's baby is illegitimate, right? Sarah, I have had just about enough from you. I'm and I... giving my baby away. As soon as it gets born, did my mom's giving me a puppy. The kind with all the spots. Oh, take a walk. We have wasted enough time in this class. I am here to teach English, not to discuss your baby problems. That's because you wouldn't know how. Dig that. I'm going to write my essay on what it's like being pregnant. That is not the assignment, Sarah. No, I can't think of anything more natural. It's for sure Thoreau never wrote about it. As I said before, you may write what you wish, as long as it deals with nature. But just let me explain one more thing. If this assignment is not finished in this class, you will take it along with your regular work over the weekend. Is that clear? Papers. Did you read mine yet? I wrote about the ocean and the beach. You see, my sister and me, we live with Grandma on the pier. It's a good subject. Oh, I know I ain't so good at spelling, but can you tell me what grade I got? Well, I think it would be good experience for you to write in class again tomorrow to see if your ideas can flower and expand a little more. Yeah, sure, okay. But can you tell me what grade I got on this one? See, I'd like to show it to my sister when she comes to visit today. She's real good in school. She gets B's and A's. And Did I do much wrong besides the spelling? Marilyn, sometimes we think along with people we're working close to. Not that you meant to, but you might have taken some of Mary Lou's ideas. I didn't. Actually, a grade isn't that important. I didn't. It's what you learn that counts, Marilyn. I thought you was different. People always say that I do things that I don't do. You're just like them. Why do they always blame me? I never copied her. I never, I never copied her. Marilyn. I never copied her. And I never stole my sister's scarves either. She lied about them, and Grandma believed her. They always lie about me. So, why don't you just shut up? I can make it. Oh, hi, Miss Baldwin. You looking for somebody? Yes, Miss Mackenzie. Have you seen her? Oh, yeah. She's um out digging up weeds. I can make it. Make it. 
this time, y'all. <laughs> Be in my here I come. <laughs> I don't understand. How come she never gets any older? How come you never get any smarter? My goodness, what brings you down here on a Sunday? I just came by to check my desk. Oh, I wish you like some iced tea. I make it myself with peppermint and clothes. Thank you. Oh, might be pretty weak by now. The ice is all gone, but we'll give it a try. In the wintertime, I make it hot like this. It's great for a sore throat or when you're feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. very different here on weekends. It's emptier somehow. Yeah, well, a lot of the girls are off on weekend passes. Got to give them some freedom. Lisa can't come back pregnant. <laughs> However, if they take off without a pass, then they're out for good. How long have you been here, Doris? Oh, boy. I was uh, coming up 23 years. It's a long time. What it is is a lifetime. You know, I was wondering why there isn't more information available to these girls on birth control. Oh, I don't know. They probably wouldn't read it anyhow. Tell me, what's your attitude toward abortion? Do you think it should be legalized? I deal with things the way they are, not with the way some people might like them to be. Anyhow, you'll always have pregnant teenage girls. That's... Uh... Inevitable. Yes, but don't you think... How is Marilyn? By the way, I mean, did you manage to find something for her? Marilyn. Yes. That poor girl is... How's she doing? As you might expect. I gave an essay assignment. She tried. You mean it was bad? Lessons and theme were okay, but... It was a direct copy of Mary Lou's story on the ocean. They were sitting together. Well, she's not working for credit in that course. So I don't think you have to make anything out of it. No, I won't grade it. Thank you for the tea. Anytime. You look nice. Gee, do you really think so? My boyfriend called. He said that he and his mother were coming to visit his cousin today. And if he had some time before his pass was up, he's coming by to see me. Well, I'm sure he will. Mary Lou, you know that really wasn't very kind. I mean, Marilyn, the copying. Well, I had a lot of homework to do this weekend. I had to wash my hair and everything. And my, my boyfriend was coming. I was too excited to think of anything to write about. I've got a solid C plus average. All you have to do is give me an F and it'll average in. You copied Marilyn? Yeah, I copied her. I already said five Hail Marys for penance. Anyway, what's the difference? Apologize. I've made a terrible mistake. I mean, I didn't give you the credit you deserved on that paper. I just assumed. I, I tried real hard. I tried a lot. I know you did. I, I just wish I could tell you. I, I think that I can do better. We can all do better. Do I get a grade now? Yes, of course you get a grade. I, I'm giving you a B. A B? Really? A B? Will I show my sister? Miss Baldwin, you know, I never took her scarf. Honest, I never did. Yeah. Boy, that was a stupid. 
stupid movie. Give me a real fairy tale any day to a fairy tale trying to be real. That's why I read books, my dear. The best part was the look that guy gave us to tour tickets. I'm surprised they didn't charge us double. <laughs> well, they don't, obviously don't know anything about prenatal influence. Well, look who's here. Miss Misplaced Modifier. Hi. Don't tell me you like this crummy place so much you can't stay away even on weekends. What dedication. Sarah, please. What's the matter? It's not about that guy, is it? What guy? Um, Mr. Until Recently. <sighs> no, it isn't him. Oh. I thought maybe you might have come back. Look, it's just that I did something unfair to someone, and I'm feeling guilty about it, that's all. That's good. Sarah, what I did was not good. No, I mean, it's good that you're feeling. Let's not get into that again, please. Let's. You gotta start somewhere. I've gotta go now. Where, that's some cardboard apartment where you can sit around grading more papers? Look, all I'm trying to say is that you got more going for you than just teaching. Don't you know that? I bet Mr. Until recently knew that. Sarah, I don't wish to discuss my personal life. Hey, Sarah, come on. I was here. You know, I almost went to San Francisco for the weekend. But then that wouldn't have been quite the same, would it? You don't know why I came here, Sam. I better go. Well, go then. You can always come and go as you want. No. Why? Because you're daring me to. It seems to me I'm daring you not to. All right. Tell me where you've been. Are you still tutoring the idle rich? No. I have a new job. Five days a week in maternity home as an English teacher. Unwed mothers, you mean? Don't call them that. It's too moralistic. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You don't believe in marriage, do you? Oh, Sam, I didn't come here to fight with you. Besides, I never said I didn't believe in marriage. I just don't know why it has to be so legally binding, that's all. You didn't want to live with me, either. I don't want to live with anyone. And you never have. And you're 36. I guess the next thing you'll tell me is that I'm an old maid. No, but... You don't seem to want to put anything to the test. Now, what's the trouble, Teach? You afraid you won't pass? Is that it? Look, I came back here, didn't I? What more do you want? All of you. Everything. You mean everything you've missed since your wife died? All right, Anne. What did you tell the others? You know, the ones without wives, dead or alive. And which are you? And what are you doing here? I don't mean just in this room. Answer me that. I don't know. I needed someone to talk to. Someone who knew me well. Well, so far, it's all been pretty much guesswork, hasn't it? I'm going to need more than that, Anne. And I know there's more. More? Or less?
the next few days that I think might interest you. You're going to teach us to fly. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Trouble is, I don't know which direction he went. I hope you all studied your assignment last night. What assignment? Because instead of the usual study, we are going to give a performance. You mean put it on? That's right. And you, Cookie, Gail, Sarah, you'll be in the first scene. All of you come up and join in. And we'll have to stage this somehow. Yes, be careful. All right. Now, Cookie, you'll play Sarah's mother. And when Gail comes... Oh, Gail. Please be careful when you die. <laughs> Cookie, I think you better help her down. Now, Sarah, you come in and see what's happened. And then... Hey! My baby just moved. She kicked me. Oh! Are you all right? I did that! Wow! That's too much. Is that it? It's wild, and there's really something in there. Too much. Do you think you can go on? I, yeah, I'm okay. I'm not sick. Maybe. I'm fine. Fine. I think maybe you should just stop walk. it, will you? I said I was okay. Just leave me alone. You're just like my mother. She suffocates me. She won't let me breathe. Can't you understand? I gotta live my own life. I gotta do what I want. I Let me go before I turn out like you. Like that. I've ever seen, isn't she, Miss Baldwin? And she's so little. Are they all so little? Oh, Marilyn, she's just beautiful. You have a right to be proud. Have you given her a name? That's why I wanted to see you. You see, I wanted to ask what your first name is. Um, unless you don't want me to, that is. I, I mean, they'll probably give her a different name anyway. Anne. My name is Anne. Anne. Oh, I like that lots, Miss Baldwin. Anne. That's nice and, and simple and short. And I bet I can even spell it. A-N-N, -N, right? Yes, that's right. Although I spell mine with an E. E-N-N. -N. That don't sound right, Miss Baldwin. The E comes at the end. It's the English way of spelling. A-N-N-E. I like that even better. A-N-N-E. It, it should be English. Because you're an English teacher, right? signed all them papers they give me. I didn't know how bad I'd want to keep her. Well, you should probably get a good home, huh? Oh, Marilyn, I'm sure she will. Or they wouldn't let just anyone have Anne. This way. Maybe she'll grow up to be like you.
What'd they say? About what I said they would. It's what I didn't say, as usual. Hey, don't blame yourself. You know what they said? They said they couldn't understand... They couldn't understand why I was feeling homesick now after gallivanting around the country for almost a year. Gallivanting. I'm surprised they even accepted the collect call. So now you can stay here and stick it out. No. I gotta get out of this place. It's making me crazy. Sarah, wait, don't! If I'm still here when Sandy comes, I'll tell him you couldn't wait. Maybe I'll find him. just about to knock. Don't bother. Nobody's home. I just came to see how you were. I'm on my way out. If you'll ever get out of my way. I can't let you do this, Sarah. Look, you don't have to worry. The tantrum's over. This is for real. There's nothing real about running out. Who am I running out on? You? I'm tired of trying to get through to you. The only person I'm running out on is Gail, and she understands. What about yourself and, and your baby? You know, I just talked to my parents in Dallas a few minutes ago. You ought to get to know them. You're just alike. You'll never find him. No, you never will. Would you like to go somewhere else? Hmm? I don't care. I need you more right now. Maybe you better take me home, Sam. I don't think I'm going to be very good company tonight. Uh -huh. The Sarah thing's really gotten to you, hasn't it? Don't worry. She'll come back. I'm not sure. If only I hadn't. Hadn't what? Oh, nothing. I just didn't handle things very well, that's all. Come on, forgive. All right, Nathan. Don't take chances, and you may never get another one. Well, I... I slapped her. Oh, the truth comes out. Across the face. It was so sudden. I've never done anything like that ever before. What has she done to deserve it? She didn't deserve it, that's the point. She... She said something. Don't bother. I've been learning what it's like to live without you ever since I met you. Go on. Well, she said... She said I'd never be able to find a man. Stupid and silly. I don't know what got into me. Sarah, that's what. Sarah got to you. You get to me. I'm getting there. <laughs> Does anyone know where Sarah is? Uh, Sarah, she's sick, Miss Baldwin. Sick with what? You know, just sick. Don't worry about it. Today we're going to begin with a novel entitled The Bridge of San Luis Rey. Oh. As we get into it, you will see that the rope bridge across the gorge which breaks and carries a small group of people to their death, is... Oh, excuse me for interrupting, but where is Sarah? What is it, Rodriguez? Uh, Sarah, uh, where is she? She's in here right now. Well, I can see that. Uh, Nurse Caulfield has her down for clinic this morning, so I thought that I would come and pick her. She's in the john. Uh, one of the house mothers said that she was not at breakfast this morning. Well, I, I can't answer for the house, Mother, but she's in the bathroom. 
Is there anything you want me to tell her when she comes back? Uh, just remind her about the clinic this morning, that's all. Certainly. Thank you very much. Thornton Wilder, the author of The Bridge of San Luis Rey, drew an analogy between the bridge and life. The tenuousness... The tenuousness of the frail bridge and life. I see. I knew you'd come back. I knew you wouldn't leave me here alone. We're all alone. That's why we need each other so much. I know. I know we do. Sarah, how did you get here without being seen? I came up the fire escape. Come on, Sarah, let's go to our room. Uh, I think I killed my baby. Oh, my stomach get her. Quick, Gail, get the nurse called Dr. Lewis, Lewis, quickly. Lewis. My baby's dead. She's dead. I killed her. My baby was going to be a girl. Rose Beckwith, night nurse. The hospital wouldn't tell me a thing. Did they save Sarah's baby? Oh, my. Did you let yourself get taken in by Sarah's dramatics? Dramatics? She was in pain. The baby wasn't moving. Well, babies in utero aren't in constant motion. <laughs> no. From the report, I read that she had pains because she'd eaten something that disagreed with her. Miss Beckwith... I saw what those pains were doing to her. It was not just indigestion. Oh, these girls are always buying things when they go off on pass. And they snitch eat on it all week. No, it was probably some stale french fries and ketchup. It takes time. But you'll soon learn about our little mothers-to-be. And the first thing for you to learn is not to be taken in by them. There is a difference between being taken in and being genuinely concerned, Miss Beckwith. You act so casual about it all. That girl was scared. She was really scared. Well, there was no need to be. And there's no need for you to be either, Miss Baldwin. Hello? Miss Baldwin? Because Heather's a wildflower. It grows free. And she'll grow up in the country. As soon as she's old enough to sit in a back sling, we'll, we'll take her hiking in the pine forest. Wait, you mean with Sandy? Of course with Sandy. We'll teach her belly botany, too. Who's belly botany? Well, that's when you scrunch down on your stomach and you study the plants up really close. Will you really live in the woods? Yeah. We're going to build a lean-to by a stream and hang a little basket for Heather to sleep in. She'll be the first thing we see every morning when we open up our eyes. Girl, you sure do have some wild imagination. I'm not imagining anything. I've been there before. You're really free in the country. Mary Lou, you have a visitor. A visitor? Whoa! Wow. <laughs> yes, he's a soldier. Woo! <laughs> He's waiting in the lounge. Oh, thank the Lord I set my hair. <laughs> you know what? I would make this for the world. Marlene, you've got a phone call. Pick it up in the lower hall. Marlene, you've got a phone call. Pick it up in the lower hall. Harold? Hi. I didn't know you were coming. Well, I, I've come. Came to see you. But you didn't tell me. Don't worry. You look great. So do you, Harold. <laughs> Don't you want to sit down or something? Yeah, 
and there you, there you are with all those men, and here I am with all these girls. It's really sort of funny, isn't it? Yeah. Mary, do it. Um, Don't you want to go outside in the patio or something? We Mary, do it. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes. Yes. Y yes what? Yes, anything. I have the ring. Thanks. You want it back to trade it in on a better one, right? Are you kidding? This is my mother's. So I shouldn't have taken it in the first place. Hey, Mary Lou, how were things with you and your boyfriend? He couldn't stay very long. How come? How'd things go? He had to go visit his mother. Is that why he came? To tell you he had to visit his mother? No, he came to get her ring back. She had to have it to wear to a family reunion. It was an heirloom. You didn't give it to him. I had to. You what? Girl, you never give anything back that someone gave you. Once you get it, it is yours. Why didn't you just cut off your hand yeah. or your finger? <laughs> You're really alone. stupid. Leave her alone. She trusts him. You have to trust people. Never trust an FOB. He'll come back, Mary Lou. He will. You just have to believe that. Sarah's always doing stuff like this. You will. Good, Mary Lou. Sarah, I'm coming. She always comes in. That's supposed to be so I must have, I, the whole thing is a confusion. Good night, Miss Wharton. Good night. Good. Oh, oh, Anne, Anne, uh, there's someone to see you in the, um, the waiting room. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry, it just can't be helped. Hello, I'm Anne Baldwin. Uh, Miss Baldwin, I'm glad we caught you before you left. Uh, we wanted to see if she was making progress. She was such a fine student before all this happened. I'm sorry. Didn't they tell you in the office? We're Sarah's parents. We arrived from Dallas this morning. Go away. Sarah, it's Anne Baldwin. Come in if you want. You saw them? They were waiting for me as I was going home. You never mentioned they were teachers. They charmed you, naturally. Bunch of teachers all together talking teacher talk. They're very concerned about you. They're that you. all right. They're concerned. They're my parents. <sighs> Why I ever called them? A flash of self-pity and now this. Everything has a price. You know what their loving suggestion was? No, but I can guess. Can you? They want you to give Heather up. You're a lousy guesser. They love me and they know I love my baby. So they want us both to come home. But that's good, isn't it? I mean, your problem is solved. Sandy's coming back. I don't have a problem. Well, then you have two choices. That's more than most people ever have. But he can't give her the best of everything, can he? I mean, like... Vitamins and pediatricians and nursery schools. I'll die back there. I'll go back to my same old room and, and I'll watch them eat grapefruits. They cut grapefruits into little even sections one at a time. And read editorials and watch the late news on TV. I'll die. What would you do? I can't make your decisions. I'm not asking you to. I'm not going to run out and do anything anybody tells me. Especially not you. I just asked what you do. Well, if I were in your situation, I'd probably give the baby up for adoption. And I'd go somewhere and make a whole new life. I'd be independent, so I wouldn't have to make choices from tight corners. Is 
that what you do? If you'll hand in your papers, we'll start planning the graduation. Will Mary Lou graduate with us? She will. She delivers on time. I bet it's just false labor. It's a good paper. Very logical and well organized. Sarah, will you play something for us on the guitar for graduation? Yeah. Why not? It'll be my farewell to the mountains. Sarah, aren't you going back to the mountains? Aren't you going to wait for Sandy? Sarah. Don't worry, it's not you. It's logic. You can be free with your own life, but when you have to consider the lives of others, you have to think twice. You mean you're not going to take Heather to the mountains in a backsling? Don't cop Somebody's out. Somebody's going to conquer this maze and get out. Somebody has to win. Gail, it's either go back home or give her away and let her be free. No! You mean you'd give Heather away? Heather, really? How can one determine the sex of an unborn baby? Sarah, don't. Don't be upset. You told me what was true, and it was true. It was true for me. But not for you. Don't you see? I told you what I would do. You're not me. Who says I'm not? <laughs> Too short. Thanks, Annette. This is Mrs. Conover. She's your pianist. Miss Baldwin. How do you do? How do you do? Nice to meet you, Mrs. Conover. The piano's over there. I'm back. Oh. Not exactly Steve McQueen, but I love him and he's my baby's father and I'm back and we're all graduating oh, together. <laughs> oh, yeah. great. But then Sarah's going back home with her parents. What about Sandy and Heather and the country? There isn't any Heather. And don't talk about her anymore, please. Not her, it. If you don't believe in Heather, then say it. Louder, I didn't hear you. It. Louder. It. Excuse me? Excuse me. Uh, would you prefer a pretty girl is like a melody or um, pomp and circumstance for the exit at the end of the graduation? Your first graduation, huh? It's nice. Oh, there is someone in the lounge looking for you. Oh, thank you. You made it. I wouldn't miss it. Besides, I have to guess which one Sarah is. It won't be hard. Uh, you'll stay for the burnt cookies, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to go. Good luck. Oh, hello. Big day, eh? Uh, Miss Baldwin, we just want to thank you for reasoning everything out with Sarah. Yes, we don't know what you told her, but we certainly are grateful. We've missed her so much. Come on, Harry. Oh, excuse me. Do you work here? Oh, may I help you? Yes. Is Gail still going to make that uh, speech? I'm her mother. Oh, how do you do? Yes, and it's a beautiful speech. Oh? I don't understand you people. She's due any minute, you know. Any minute. And she should be lying down. She shouldn't have to go through with all this. I don't understand why you people want to put these girls on display anyway. I can assure you, the doctor and the nurse... Oh, what do you know? Where is the head of this place, that Miss McKendall, or whatever her name is? Oh, 
Watch out, Dad. I wish I could graduate, too. I've got two more years to go, though. Your time will come, baby. Gail, yeah. you look beautiful. Look at you. Hey, guys, I think I'm getting a sore throat. There's this big white clump back there. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm going to do it. I know. Because you have to sing it. That's why you're nervous. Very funny. What are you going to sing? Where's your guitar? It's on the stage. Well, this is it. They're out there. Sandy's not. Hey, remind me not to introduce you to my mother. Oh, she can't be that bad. <sighs> she raised you. All right. Everybody ready? Oh, I've been ready. <laughs> You'll be fine. Well, let's get this show on the road. Now, just as we rehearsed it. Wait, what are you doing? With graduating. Well, the speaker isn't here yet from downtown. Good. We have a very fine program without him. No, you won't start until he comes. Doris, these graduation robes are hot. My girls are more important than any speaker. Your girls? All right. If you proceed with this, you take full responsibility because I will have no part of it. Ready, seniors? Baby. education at Huntington House has been more than strictly academic. We've lived together, shared problems together, and learned together. We came here as little girls, bearing a premature womanhood. But we will leave as young women who understand that life does not make us. We make life. Wasn't till the other. 
Sarah. Sarah, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Sam Dutton. I guessed right. Is this, sir? Uh... And you'll take a nap, and I... Oh, Miss Rodriguez. Will you please tell this child that she should be lying down somewhere? Well, she is all right. There's no reason for her to be lying down. You people amaze me. I mean, you really do. This heat, this excitement. I mean, really. Somebody should know better. Oh, and please don't let Sarah go home. Don't let her give Heather up. Make her stronger than we are. Gail. We are going home. Leave her alone, Kale. Oh, Sarah, please don't go home. What in the world are you doing? Mrs. Dorn. They understand each other. Don't you see? That's what Gail needs now. How do you know? Come on. Somebody's got to get away, Sarah. Somebody's got to get out of here before they lock the doors. Sarah! Sarah! There she is. see why she has to be here. Because I want her to. She's my friend. I can have at least one friend to defend me, can't I? This is not a trial, Sarah. And Miss Baldwin is your English teacher, not a witness. Well, now, what is your position? Are you here as a friend or a teacher? I guess I'm here as Sarah's friend. Doing. Sarah, we've talked this over. Wake up, girl. Sarah, listen to me, honey. In a half an hour, you would have been gone. We would have been on our way back home. Don't you see? It's nothing but chance. He came before we left. Is that what you want for your baby? Honey, please. Are you going to deliver that baby beside the road somewhere? Darling, please, listen to me. When you bear a baby, you see, your life changes. You assume responsibilities, and you have to give up part of your freedom, baby. Don't you understand? Is he going to give up part of his for you? Are you willing to find work? Are you willing to give up your freedom for her and your baby? I have things to do and places to see, but I want Sarah to see them with me. That's why I came back. I love her. And I'm ready now to love our baby, too. Tell me what you feel. Oh, Sarah. I can't answer. I don't want any answers. If you're my friend, you'll just tell me straight how you feel in here, please. Oh, Sarah. Sarah, I guess I've always wanted what you and Sandy have. Always. It's just that I... I've been too afraid to feel. Till now. Go. Go with him, Sarah. Go with him and live your own life.
What's the verdict? Well, she would have gone with him anyway, no matter what I would have said. She already had her mind made up. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? Well, they won't rehire me. If they don't, I will. Don't you worry. We'll get you a new teaching job. We don't use the impersonal. <laughs> All right, they won't. Just remember, getting fired is an honorable exit. Proves you didn't quit. You know, I think she was not only showing them, she was showing herself. I'm beginning to feel like 17 again. <laughs> I'm back down to 10. How about some of those burnt cookies and a little punch? Hmm? Let's go. Okay. Are you really going to rehire me? <laughs> Not unless we're partners. I want to say goodbye to Miss Ball. Goodbye, Miss Ball. Oh, you don't want to go in there again. Come on. Chill. I'd laugh again if we could still be friends. Life is not a love song, but broken hearts will mend. And in the quiet of my room, we might sit and hold the pieces. I think that we could still be. Things back again 